Hey designers, what's up? It's your boy Nadeem and wow, it's been ages since I last uploaded a video. Anyways, hope you guys are all blessed and doing well. This video was planned and due over a year ago but we're here now. It's going to be a quick walkthrough of how to set up an interior render on Keyshot. As you can see on screen, I used the image on the left for reference which I found over on Pinterest and created my own using Keyshot which is the image on the right. Also, here's a clear vision of the render for you to see without any of the materials being applied. During the tutorial, I'm going to show you everything from how I modeled the room, added the materials and how to use a HDRI environment as a lighting source and using it to get the view of nature through the window. I'll also make the project file available for download from my store. So yeah, hope you guys enjoy the rendering process and let's get right into the video. I want to try and keep this video as straight to the point and as short as possible to save your time and mine. So yeah, I started off by modeling my room of course and this was done in SolidWorks. I would also advise you to make it dimensionally accurate as possible because it helps with applying and scaling your materials and textures. Also the thickness of the window was about 50mm I believe and again this can impact the refractiveness of your window. But don't worry about it too much because the dimensions of your model is something you can always go back in and adjust as necessary. My room is nothing special and complicated as it's just a box but you can make your room any shape you like and you want to model it closed with the roof. In Keyshot we will position the camera to be on the inside of the room so don't worry if you can't see the insides to begin with. Next you want to import your model into Keyshot and start applying your materials. Let's firstly just unlink everything as it will make it easier to apply the materials accordingly. You might want to just hide your roof or a side wall temporarily so it makes it easier for you to apply all the materials. The window material is just a glass with a white colour and the refractive index is set to 1.55. This will impact the reflection on the window and it's something you will notice much later on as the scene develops with the HDRI and the furniture. With anything you can always go back and make the adjustments to the materials to perfectly suit your scene. Next I'm going to apply this paint material to all the walls. Again it's a fairly simple material with a concrete texture set as a roughness map and a noise texture set as a bump. This will give us a nice and realistic textured effect on the wall. The window frame is just a black rough aluminium and it's not so important anyway. And the last material that really needs our attention is the floorboards. Again it's simply a texture map with a bump. I did make some colour adjustments as well to give it the right tone as it was overly saturated to begin with. And yeah, that's all the materials we need to set up our room. Now for the environment which will also be used as our light source for the interior scene. Let me quickly explain what an HDRI map is for you guys. So an HDRI map is a 360 degree image that includes lighting information as well as visuals. You can think of an HDRI map as a digital photographic scan of a place. For that reason HDRI maps are also sometimes called HDRI environments. So HDRI stands for High Dynamic Range Image. Here are a couple of websites where you can download them for free. And as you can see they cover a wide range of environments as well. And I'll just download one that I can use as an example for this video. Now just go ahead and plug in your HDRI map as your environment in the HDRI editor. As you can see it's working both as a backdrop and also as a light source for the interior scene. You can rotate it and adjust the size as necessary and of course this will impact exactly where the light is coming from as well. Now if I just bring back in the roof model you can get a better idea of how the HDRI is acting as a light source and also better see the view you can only observe through the window. Now change the lighting preset to interior and the light will start to function a lot more realistically and bounce across all the walls as it should be doing to light up the room. To have even more control over the lighting if you're not happy with just the HDRI we can also add in a HDRI pin and set it to blend then position it in the sky to bring in more light to better suit our needs for the scene. You can tweak its radius and brightness accordingly as well. And if the HDRI does go blurry all you have to do is click the little recycle looking button to generate their full resolution HDRI. Now 
By the way, I did change the HDRI map to a different one just because I didn't like the way the other one looked and this one looks a lot nicer through the window and by the way this one is also available for free from the Keyshot library so it's really nothing to worry about. So to conclude the tutorial we want to set up the camera and change the perspective focal length to 80 and yeah you can position the camera to wherever you need. Now you can bring in all of your pre-prepared assets and furniture pieces or you could have actually done this early in the process but whatever suits you. By the way, I downloaded all of my furniture from CG Access. For the best rendering results, switch the lighting preset to interior, make sure you have the switch on and then change the rendering mode to GPU. The render always looks better this way. Rendering interior scenes requires a high number of samples and I recommend having over a thousand at least. And uh, also set denoise as this will help you out massively with how the render looks. Lastly, you can make any further adjustments using the image settings and dig into the photographic image style to improve your visual. Feel free to tweak the contrast, exposure and everything else until you're happy. And also don't forget and never ever underestimate the power of post-processing in Photoshop. Honestly it's a lifesaver and here you can really tweak you know, and adjust your visuals until you're perfectly happy. And yeah that pretty much wraps up the tutorial. So wow we got through another video. I think this is my first one in 2023 which is kind of crazy but we made it. Hope you enjoyed watching the video. Like I said, I'll put the file available for download on my store. So yeah, up until next time, let me know what you think of this video. So yeah, take care. Peace.